A core motivating question uh, behind our 18 months of study and behind uh, our report is, how do we make America competitive again globally in semiconductors? Competitive uh, in manufacturing, competitive uh, in innovation and design, competitive in partnership with uh, other companies uh, and other countries in the intense, very complicated and intricate collaborations that are needed uh, to uh, achieve every point in the process of the supply chain that puts that semiconductor chip in your iPhone or your automobile or increasingly your refrigerator or, um, you know, the uh, guided missile that we need to have to secure the United States of America. You start with the business environment. We need to make it much more tax friendly over the long run, not just for a year or two. For example, uh, we could extend uh, the 100% uh, tax depreciation for uh, investments in capital equipment for semiconductors. That could even be made permanent. Uh, we could extend beyond the 2027 time horizon the 25% tax credit that's been written into the Chips and Science Act for uh, semiconductor manufacturing. We should enable companies in high technology and semiconductors uh, more generally to uh, rapidly uh, write off, even with a single year, within a single year, all of the uh, capital investments uh, they're making for research uh, and development. Then uh, there is the regulatory environment on the environmental side. Uh, the environmental regulations at the national level under the National Environmental Protection Act and at many state and local levels can impose a three to four year time horizon uh, in order to get uh, plant design approved for a manufacturing plant. We need to rapidly accelerate that if these plants are gonna be competitive in an era when the generation of chips that are being produced basically has a two year time horizon of uh, development before the next generation comes on. So let's try and compress a one to two to three year environmental approval into no more than three to six months. And let's uh, add the, the staffing and incentivizing of the approval process to get that done. We need to uh, improve the human pipeline for talent uh, in the engineering field. This, uh, it's not enough just to have great software engineers. We need great electrical engineers to uh, manage the design and production of advanced semiconductors. Uh, some of those must come from the United States uh, in greater numbers by once again incentivizing and rewarding careers in electrical engineering, material science, and related fields of engineering uh, with scholarships and dedicated jobs and so on and so forth. We also need to secure the international pipeline of engineering talent in these fields. And the way we recommend is uh, to ensure that all graduates of masters and PhD programs in science, technology, engineering, and math are immediately awarded uh, green cards to stay in the United States uh, and help make us uh, in engineering uh, giant. Maybe this should even be done for bachelor's degree uh, holders as well. Obviously, this is not only going to benefit uh, semiconductor manufacturing and design, but all fields of high technology. You wanna make America great again? You gotta make America great again technologically. And we need uh, all hands on deck, domestic, and anyone who wants to come here and become part of this great American experiment, economically, socially, and politically. On the import side, we don't wanna become dependent on China 
uh, supplying the semiconductors that we need for our automobiles uh, and uh, sort of our mid-level semiconductor manufacturing chip needs. And that means that we have to prevent China from dumping its mid-level chips on American and European markets uh, by subsidizing their industries uh, in violation of the World Trade Organization rules uh, and in violation of our most basic uh, standards of economic fairness and competitiveness. Uh, we have to ensure uh, that we do not become excessively dependent on uh, China's role for any phase of the semiconductor um, chip uh, that we use in our um, essential goods and in our national security, our weapon systems, and so on. And those stages begin with the raw materials and extend to the design, the manufacturing, the packaging, assembly, and testing. Uh, we cannot allow any portion of that supply chain to be excessively controlled by the People's Republic of China.